world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the root canal specialist to the stars, the grace life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this magnificent Monday. Now let's get to the root of your problem. Today, I want to talk to you guys about something that you probably never experienced. Something you probably say, ah, I've never experienced that. Well, I have. I want to talk to you guys today about how to manage meltdowns. How to manage meltdowns. You may, you may say, I'm not sure, what's a meltdown? Have you ever had a child throw a temper tantrum in the mall and they just showed out? And you're like, how in the world am I going to manage this meltdown? And some of you guys say, I know how you're going to manage it. Just take out your belt or you just take them in the bathroom and give them a couple of spankers on their behind and that'll manage their meltdown. Yeah, you can do that as a child. But what happens if this person is an adult? How do you manage meltdown as an adult? What if that's not another person? What if that's not your child? What is? It? What if it's you? How to manage meltdowns and in life we will all experience meltdowns we will all experience pressure from every side you just want to throw your hands up and quit how do i know because i've been there i've had pressure on all sides pressure on in my health pressure in my marriage pressure in my business pressure in my home and i'm like lord i'm just gonna throw my hands up because i don't know what to do and you know what god says thank you this is not your battle, Rico. This is not your battle, Mike. This is not your battle, Remy. This is not your battle, Jeremy. This is not your battle, Angel. This is not your battle, Gretchen. It's my battle. Let me handle it. And sometimes God is just waiting for you to throw your hands up in surrender and praise. Come on now, Holy Spirit, speak this. Surrender and praise. See, when you throw your hands up, that means in a spiritual sense that I give up. God, I need you to step in. And some of you guys are right there now. That you're getting pressure on all sides. You've done everything you can do. I just want to throw your hands up. Throw your hands up and surrender and praise. Don't you know that is synonymous? When you throw your hands up and surrender, that's also a sign of praise. And God goes to work on your behalf. Are you getting this? It reminds me of a situation where Moses was facing and Moses was a leader. Moses was leading the million of, of million children of Israel out of the promised land. They were in the wilderness. And he got so frustrated because they kept complaining. Have you ever led a group of people and it seemed like everything you do, they're always complaining? Whether you are a CEO of a company, you're owner of a business, you are leading a church, <laughs> you're a church leader, or even leading your home. It seems like, man, every time I do something that I'm trying to promote my family, promote this business, try to make people better than they were before, it seems like they always are unappreciative. They just want to throw your hands up and quit. Well, that's what Moses experienced. These people was complaining about it was hot, and then it was too cold, and hey, I missed it. You know, I missed eating you know, the leeks and all the food out in Egypt, but yet they don't remember in Egypt, man, they were enslaved and they had thoughts about going back there. And you may be saying, well, Dr. Short, they're crazy. Well, guess what, man? When you got pressure on all sides and you're dealing with uncertainty, it's easy to go back to how you were. It's easy to walk backwards into the land that's familiar. You know, beloved, God is trying to move you into the promised land. And he's going to give you specific instructions on how to get there. Just like he did Moses. So the people at one point, they were very thirsty. They were out in the desert and they was thirsty. And they say, Moses, give us something to drink. And God told Moses specifically, Moses, I want you to speak to the rock. And I know Moses was like, what? Speak to a rock? Speaking to a rock and you're going to have water come out? God, that doesn't even make sense. See, that's the thing. When God tells you to do something, it usually is not going to make sense to your natural self. It's the spiritual part. And God just simply wanted Moses to trust him. He was developing Moses' character. What has God asked you to do that did not make sense? 
I'm going to let that sit there for a minute. What did God ask you that did not make sense or something you were like, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this or I don't know if I have time to do this. What did God tell you to write that book? Did God tell you to teach that Sunday school class? Did God tell you to open a business? Did God tell you to close a business? Because sometimes it may not be opening something. Sometimes it may be closing something. And God can give us clear directions on both if we just sit and listen to his voice. And some of us get so busy, we can't hear God because we listen to what other people are saying. We're trying to get advice from people that are natural versus God who is supernatural. So Moses, instead of him speaking to the rock, you know what Moses did? Moses hit the rock. He was frustrated. He was like, I don't think if I speak to this rock, water's going to come out. That doesn't even make common sense. So he struck the rock, not once, but twice. So after the second time, he struck the rock. And guess what God did? God made water flow out that rock, which is something that's supernatural. And that was not the way God intended for Moses to handle it. He got frustrated and he hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And that's what happens when you let frustration get a hold of you and you get this thing called a temper tantrum or you have a meltdown. Instead of you speaking to that situation, come on, Holy Spirit, you started taking your own action. You start taking it into your own hands. And that's the reason why Moses was able to see the promised land, but he couldn't enter it because he did not trust God and his direction. Beloved, don't let that be you. Don't let God show you your promised land, but you can't enter into it because you did not do what he's telling you to do. So what happened is prophetically, that rock was Christ. That rock was Jesus. Jesus was that rock. Come on, Holy Spirit now. Jesus was that rock. And we don't have to put things in our own hands. Only thing we got to do is speak to the rock. We speak to Jesus. We tell Jesus, as the Bible says, all our worries, all our cares. And we say, Jesus, I'm stuck in this situation. Jesus, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. And Kristen, I'm trying to get out of it. I'm trying to get out between this rock and the hard place. And guess what we do? God wants us to speak to Jesus about that situation. And oftentimes, God won't remove that situation right away. Sometimes he will let us stay in that situation for development. Not to hurt us, but to help us. Did you know pressure used properly can develop us? It can develop our spiritual strength? Beloved, that's how diamonds are made. If it wasn't for the pressure on the cold, we won't see the beauty of the diamond. Therefore, if God doesn't allow you to experience a certain pressure, not to hurt you, beloved, but to develop you, man, you can't be everything that God has called you to be. It reminded me to this morning, this morning I was working out and tomorrow morning was my strength, this morning was my strength day. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh man, I got to get underneath this heavy weight. And guess what? I got under that weight and man, that weight was heavy. It was heavy. But guess what? I did the best I could with that weight and got that last rep in where it felt like it was about to kill me. But guess what happens? After I continue to get under this weight, you know what happens? Physically, I get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then the definitions start coming. I start developing my muscles and I start getting stronger. Now, if I choose to go into the weight room and not strengthen, have strength and conditioning, if I choose, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go the easy route. I'm just going to go up here. Instead of me putting weights on, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to just lift the um, the barbell and that's all I'm going to do, you know, or the straight bar. And that's all, if I, that's all I do. Guess what, man? I'm not going to get stronger. I'm not going to develop. 
I'm not gonna be able to see the results that I know that every trainer wants their client to see. Likewise, if God doesn't allow you to get underneath some of this weight of the world, we won't develop. Say, so what are you saying? I'm talking about how to manage meltdowns. And, and guess what? We have to learn how to trust God even in those situations. I remember another time, I just experienced this thing. I was looking to invest in some real estate. And I had been looking and looking. And one of my buddies said, hey, man, you ought to check out these condos down in uh, South Florida, man. You can get one of those and rent them out. The only caveat is these particular condos are cash purchases. So I showed it to my wife and she said, oh, this looks nice, but I don't, I don't know if I feel comfortable about putting that much cash into something that we're not going to use personally and we can't see. So I prayed about it and I said, Lord, this is something that I've always wanted to do, but I don't know if it's the right time. So I consulted with my financial advisor. He was like, yeah, you, you have enough capital. We can raise to get that. But we want to make sure that you understand what you're getting. We want to make sure that it's liquid. So we did all the research and he was like, well, you could do it, but I'm not sure if it's the right time. And I spoke with my wife about it and she said, I don't think this is the right time and I don't feel comfortable. Now, I would go with you to check it out and this is what you want to do. That's fine. I'll support you, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. And did you know that something inside of me said, don't do it? It wasn't just a something. It was the Holy Spirit. Now, I could have had a meltdown. I could have had a temper tantrum. Like, I'm trying to do this for us and this and that, this and that. I said, no, I know that the peace of God has to be in my heart before I move forward on something, especially like this. And I didn't get a piece about it. So you know what I did, Chris? You know what I did? Um, Susie, do you know what I did? Mike, do you know what I did? John, do you know what I did? Remy? I said, you know what? We're just going to table it for now. Instead of me having a timber tantrum, instead of me having a meltdown, I, Lord, I choose to wait on you. And that's the word for today. Sometimes you have to learn how to wait on the Lord. The Bible says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. Okay. And they shall walk and they, they, they don't even have to faint, man. So when you're going through a situation right now, a tough time, just know that you don't have to have the temper tantrum, you don't have to melt down, you just have to speak to the rock. Speak to Christ, speak to Jesus about what you have going on. And until you get a piece about it, don't move forward. I would rather to pause on something than to move forward in regret. Regret. I, wait, I would rather wait on the Lord than to move forward to make an emotional decision that's going to cost me in the end. It's going to cost me more than I'm willing to pay. And a lot of times the enemy, the enemy gets us emotionally entangled. You remember, remember entanglement? Remember uh, Will and Jada's in an entanglement? That's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy, Sarah, wants to get you emotionally entangled into a situation. And then therefore you're making emotional decisions. Not biblical based decisions, not waiting on the Lord, not consulting with the Holy Spirit. He don't want you to do it because he wants you to have it now. Oh my goodness. So some of you guys right now are, you know, worried about how oh, I'm getting older. Lord, am I going to get married? Some of you guys are getting older. Like, am I going to have some children? Some of you guys are getting older. And, and, and am I going to get a house? Am I going to get my own business? Am I going to get, man, God, before you were born, God has created everything for you in the perfect time, in the perfect way. You just got to trust him. And it's not about what other people say. And that's the other thing. Some people are so worried about what other people say and they're getting advice from other people versus getting advice from God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Those friends, they're, they, they may mean you, but they're not God. They don't know the end from the beginning. They don't know what's in, 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 in the best for your situation where you are now, but God does. Like my buddy DJ Khaled, God did, God does. Consult with him. 
Ask him. The Bible says whoever needs wisdom from God, you ask him and he will liberally give it to you. And you may be saying, well, Dr. Short, you don't understand that I don't know if I can approach God like that because of what I did last night, what I did this this morning and these issues I'm dealing with and, and, and seeing it. That has nothing to do with it. Once you get Jesus in your life, once you ask Jesus to come in your heart, all your sins are cast as far as the east to the west and God does not keep account of your sins anymore. That's Bible. God does not keep account of your sins anymore. So if he don't keep account of your sins, why are you? That's right. Go and read Romans 5.1. That's some Bible for you. It says that because of Jesus' finished work and your trust in Jesus, God's righteousness is credited to your account, not counting your sins against you. It's not about your righteousness. It's not about what you do or don't do. It's about his righteousness becoming your righteousness. Because your righteousness without Christ Jesus is nothing but a filthy rag. And if you want to know what a filthy rag is in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 64, that is a smelly, dirty, used tampon. That's what your righteousness is without Jesus in it. To God. Come on now. So y'all y'all ain't ready for me to be real on this Monday. So manage your meltdowns, manage your meltdowns, manage your tip potential. The main thing you want to do is speak to the rock. You want to speak to the Lord, speak to Jesus about what you're going on and expect him to answer because he has the Holy Spirit living inside you. That's going to be your counselor. That's going to be your guide. He's your wisdom. He's your paraclete. He's, he's there with you, whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley. It does not matter. And he's with you all the way to the end of your life into eternity. So as believers, we have an advantage over other people. We have the wisdom of God. We have the grace of God. We have the mercy of God that's new for us every single morning and not just a.m. Morning is when you wake up to the truth. Morning is when you apply your righteousness to whatever your situation that you're facing. When I say your righteousness, I'm talking about his righteousness to your account. Managing meltdowns. And if you do this, you'll be able to manage your meltdowns because it's not you doing it. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God inside of you managing the meltdowns. And he's going to do it. In the name of Jesus, he's going to do it. Love y'all. Have a magnificent Monday and a blessed week. Grace life.